finer. Time is 30 minutes and there is a big queue. I am in the queue now. Let's see how long it takes. See the rides are ready. People are going. Oh my God. Camera is working. There are too many rides but still wait time is 30 minutes. There is too much of a queue. When I reach here around 9 o'clock morning. I was getting more from the taxi. I told David, 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 no, no, no rush. What is it? I thought. Inside. And aside. Now before hopping on board, folks, you should have picked up a pair of 3D glasses. If you do not have a pair of 3D glasses with you here today, uh, just go ahead and raise your hand right now, get the attention of our team members, our studio tour ambassadors. They will be able to grab you a pair of 3D glasses. Alrighty, at this time, make sure you are also sliding over to the television studio property we're going to be exploring. In fact, uh, for some of you guys, you might be able to see some of our largest and newest stages out there. You can see the big numbers, 30 through 33. Just keep a note of that. Remember that. We're going to be down there here in no time at all. But at this moment, we are just waiting for our driver to hop on board our tram for us to rock and roll on out of here. Just sit back and relax. We're going to be uh, rocking and rolling in no time at all.
Saturday Night Live, as well as The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon. You guessed it, that's right. It's Jimmy Fallon. Oh, hey there. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guide. Alec. And the greatest driver. Gladys. <laughs> Alec. Wait, what? I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. Yes, folks, a couple of safety rules to go over kindly. Please pay attention. Number one, in any sort of emergency, medical or otherwise, if anything of value like your cell phone falls off the side of our tram or have any audio or visual technical difficulties, we've got a red cord above your heads. You can't pull that cord. Get my attention. I'll be back there to assist you when it is safe for myself to do so, but please remain inside of the vehicle, folks. We're entering private property. Please listen to Frankie. Remain seated throughout the duration of the tour. Also keep arms, legs, selfie sticks inside. Wait, no, don't listen to Frankie. No smoking or vaping of any kind. And be prepared today. Our tour will feature loud noises, pyrotechnics, sudden tram movements, and water effects. We want you to take as many photos, selfies, TikToks as you'd like. Just keep the cameras and phones safe and dry. Alrighty, folks, the safety rules, they are done, and our studio tour is about to begin in what we call the Universal Movie Timeline. You're right, you're left, you're about to see just a few of the 8,000 films Universal has created within our 100-year history. Yeah, that's right. We're over 100 years old. Don't we look good? Now, as we head on down the hill here over to the right, you might be catching glimpses of our new Super Nintendo World. Coming to us uh, February 17th, 2023. Visit us again then, folks. We'd love to have you. Why am I talking about Nintendo World here on the studio tour? Well, it goes to show just how far we have come as the major motion picture city that we are. That's right, folks. Universal. We are a city. Universal City. And we have been a city since our opening day ceremonies. March 15th, 1915. Over a hundred years ago. Uh, we were created by Carl Lemley there on your screens. And he wanted to create an entire city dedicated to the making of movies. And, well, he succeeded. We've got our own zip code. Gas station. Coffee bean. Dry cleaner. Sheriff substation. And our very own fire station. That one I'll prove to you. It's here to the right. You're looking at Fire Station 51, a real-life, fully functional fire station, real-life, fully functional firefighter, somewhere around, I'm not seeing any. The other day they had the uh, the truck pulled forward, they are washing it. It's very cinematic. Uh, we don't have 51 fire stations, though, just the one. We called it 51 based on the classic TV series Emergency. Chicago Fire, NBC, their fire station, you'll note, is also 51, another homage. But, uh, like I said, Universal, we have been a city since its opening day ceremonies, but we are the strangest city on Earth because nobody lives here. Now, of course, uh, instead of living here, most of us work here, and when we work here, movies are made. Now the iconic scenes on your screens, all of them filmed right here inside of our Stage 12. You're going to see it coming up here to the left. On the outside of our Stage 12, the voice logo. Up until recently, the voice filmed on the inside. It no longer does. Uh, as they oh, this entire area here to the left undergoing a huge reconstruction or refurbishment. We're actually preparing for the 2028 Olympics. Comes to Los Angeles that year. And NBC Universal. Us, we're, we're the media conglomerate that broadcasts it here, so we are preparing six years in, in advance. But we are about to head into the heart of the studio, and you're going to be seeing a whole lot of our stages. Universal, we got about 30 of them. And uh, look, here's the thing. With all of our new theme park elements and new uh, facilities being constructed, we're very excited about our future, but they're also making a lot of noise, which is not conducive to the filmmaking process. We like control here in Hollywood, right? So all of our stages here to the left-hand side, we call them sound stages. They they are 98% soundproof, and they allow us almost complete control over the worlds that are built on the inside. Uh, you're seeing a little bit of activity out here today. Uh, we've got two productions filming inside of a couple of these stages. We've got Grand Crew with Nicole Byer. They're working on their second season. You might recognize her name from shows like Netflix's Nailed It. 
The next couple of stages will be passing off by Bel Air, the modern adaptation of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, starring Jabari Banks, streaming on NBC's Peacock. But uh, when these productions moved in, what they got was what you see on your screen, an empty room. It was their job to build whatever they wanted to on the inside. Now, uh, for example, Bel Air, they built a mansion inside of several of our stages, but they weren't the first. Uh, HBO's Hacks was filming here before they were, and they built Deborah Vance's mansion inside of those same stages. We also built a high school for the reboot of Saved by the Bell, and a, uh, a store for the show Superstore on NBC. I know it's hot in here, but let's have some patience for one another. Yeah, you know, the heat makes us all act. If your face stays where it is, it's going to get punched. But let's talk about what you can see on the outside now. Here to the left, this is Bel Air's base camp. What is base camp? Well, this is where the cast crew meet at the beginning, middle, end of the day. It looks like they're uh, starting to clear out their base camp. They're probably done filming their second season here. But base camp, this is where, in theory, the actor trailers would be found. Camera gear, production equipment, catering, crafty, and look, oh, we got somebody waving at us. Hello, goodbye. Uh, 14 over here, a lot of history, uh, not just Bel Air. This was also seen as Mission Control and Ron Howard's Apollo 13. Jurassic Park where the Jeep fell from the very top of the tree. The kid Tim narrowly escaped. That happened inside of that sound stage. Uh, but the front lot, this area, we're driving through in this moment. This is, well, the nerve center of the entire film and TV industry. If we wanted to, we could and do make movies from beginning to end all out this way. Uh, we're passing by editing bays there to the left-hand side. We've got construction mills and offices up ahead and more stages. Every part of the filmmaking process is done right here. But the stages to the right, sitcom alley is what we call them. Uh, I've already mentioned a whole lot of TV shows, which Universal, we've been creating TV shows since its inception. Uh, after all, NBC Universal. Yeah, that's us. And, uh, and today, in fact, we're actually busier than ever with television and production. Uh, we are sort of uh, starting to shut down uh, for the uh, holidays, but uh, in the last couple of weeks and months, we've had shows like uh, Netflix's Never Have I Ever, the Kelly Clarkson show. We got a new show with Kaylee Cuoco from Big Bang Theory called Based on a True Story. We're working on the reboot to Quantum Leap and the prequel to Ted. Uh, the movies, of course, were produced by Seth MacFarlane. The series will be as well, and believe it or not, folks, the star of Ted, coming up here to the left-hand side. It's Ted, enjoying the world's dirtiest martini. Good for you, my guy. Now our teddy bear there, he's hanging outside of our offices. I told you they were coming. These bungalows here, writers, directors, producers utilize these every day, but uh, they were not originally constructed to be offices. They were originally dressing rooms to the stars of the golden years of Hollywood. Actors like Lucille Ball, Jimmy Stewart. These were their homes away from home, but actors today still use them, but as offices. For example, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he's got a company called Seven Bucks. You'll see the Seven Bucks parking spots coming up here to the left. He's currently working on Super Pets for DC. Next to the parking spots to Monkey Paw Productions, that's Jordan Peele's production company. Our musical theater fans on board the tram here today, you might be excited about Wicked Part 1 and Part 2, created by Mark Platt. In fact, his offices are coming up here down the alley to the left-hand side. You'll see a sign that says MP and a Wicked Balloon floating up in the air there. But one of our offices out this way, it's always been an office. You'll see it. It's 5195. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock's silhouette painted next to the door there. That was his office when he worked here. And we offered that office to Steven Spielberg. He said no. But it's okay, we ended up giving it to the De Laurentiis company and uh, they brought us uh, Hannibal, so sinister things. We got Lopez versus Lopez filming out this way along with Killing It as well. But look, at this point of our tour, folks, we have been passing by the outside of a whole lot of buildings and uh, we're going to continue to do that. But these buildings are about to get just a smidge cooler because we are about to cross the threshold from our front lot into our back lot. Now, of course, the back lot is the lot that's in the back, but it's also where we shoot the exciting exterior stuff. Whatever we need to take our actors to a city, well, we can do that. We take them to whatever city we want them to be, and we'll pack up the cast, the crew, the equipment, all that jazz. But sometimes it's actually easier to bring the city to us. And folks, we have actually done that here today. Now, on your right-hand side, you're looking at this picture of a nondescript city. This isn't any particular city whatsoever. We put that in the background of a shot. Uh, but we can also take our actors into the heart of a city itself as well. In fact, coming up here to your right-hand side, folks, welcome to our New York City. Chicago. <laughs> L.A. Uh, any metro area we want this to be, we turn these city streets into. Now these sets, they are permanent, but customizable. Uh, for example, Brownstone Street, seen in a variety of productions, like uh, Gone Girl with Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike, Home Alone 2 with Macaulay Culkin, and one of my personal favorites, Bruce Almighty. Place the door! In the shower! Uh, it's like that. 
Now, of course, if you look at the set, look at the screen, you'll notice it looks a little different. The trees, street lamps, cars, awnings, they're not there or changed. And that's because uh, Productions, it's their job to rent out these sets, enhance the environment of the scene, and frankly, make them look... Thanks, Jim. But no set is more beautiful, no more famous than the set we're turning on to right now, folks. Welcome to our courthouse square, better known as Hill Valley, from Back to the Future. It was actually the back lot of Fortnite Square that inspired the entire climax of Back to the Future. I had scenes up in the clock tower on that ledge. It was the ledge about that wide. And I was standing inside looking at the ledge, and I already had vertigo. I just thought there's no way in the world, no way I'm going to stand on that. I was up there for quite a while. Of course, I had a cable. <laughs> <laughs> Now, of course, if you look at the set, look at the screen, you'll notice it looks a little different. The columns have changed, and that's because we don't want you to recognize it. We also reuse this area like any of our other backlot sequences. Uh, this was seen in Gremlins, Ghost Whisperer, Saving Mr. Banks, Key and Peel, To Kill a Mockingbird, just to name a few. But uh, the street we're about to turn on to, now this street is the most filmed location in all of our backlot. Uh, it was seen as 1940s New York for Captain America, the first Avenger. When the Cap first gets his powers and he's running through the streets of New York, y'all, it happened right here. Shia LaBeouf ran down the street with the very first Transformers with the all spark in his arms. It was DTLA. This is seen uh, at uh, a Furious 7. TV shows like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Good Girl Swap, just about every show I mentioned on the front lot. But uh, more often than not, it is played as modern day New York. Hey everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. Once got mugged over there by an old woman, tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey buddy, how's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Hey, it's cool, guys. Yeah, I, I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. Now these sets are about as fake as the taxi cab you just saw on your screens. For one thing, all of the brick and stone you're looking at, None of that's real brick or stone. It's all just fiberglass, recycled plastic, molded, painted, designed to look like brick or stone. That way, not only can we change the small details, but also the big picture. We can change the fronts and sides of these buildings if we'd like to as well. But uh, these buildings pretty much just fronts and sides. If you look through the windows and doors, you'll notice most of these buildings, you can't go very far into them. Only about three to five feet. The majority of our backlot sets, the sets you'll be seeing here today, you pretty much can only use them as exterior sets. If our actors go inside, we cut the camera and we move into a sound stage where we got a whole lot more control and we use the magic of editing to make it look like it happened. I like that. But look, here are sets are often created just to, only with the camera you can see and as we round the corner, I'll, I'll prove it to you because you can see how thin they actually are, right? <laughs> And honestly, a lot of the times we don't even build with the camera sees. We'll add it later on on the computer using digital technology, CGI, computer-generated imagery. And that's exactly what they did for Peter Jackson's King Kong. It's the original King Kong that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old. And I wanted to become a filmmaker. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the beach. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. <sighs> Alrighty, folks, we do want to make sure that you have those 3D glasses ready to go in your hands. And also, please remain seated for me, folks. The road ahead, it is going to be a bumpy one. Hold on to your loved ones, giant donuts and wands, and have a tight grip on those phones, folks. We are about to return to Skull Island.
63D, <laughs> one of the world's most intense 3D experiences. Wow. Nicely done. Wow. Who knew that a uh, tour that started off with a history lesson would take such a dramatic turn? Alrighty, folks, go ahead and uh, take off the suit of glasses. You will need them later at the tour, so please don't lose them for me, folks. Hey, put your hands on. Anybody here get spit on by a dinosaur? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most of you. <laughs> don't worry. That'll be the last time it happens on this tour. 